Hi everyone, here's Simone, this is tutorial 15 and today we're going to speak about uh, Voronoi. I was actually inspired from the last tutorial of uh, Pacquiao 12 about this topic and uh, I remember that it was something interesting also in Schiller Toy and actually this is mathematically correct. So if you're a sneaky guy you can maybe mix my tutorial with the tutorial of Pacquiao and make something nice. Okay. In this tutorial we're gonna take this code that is free and we will actually uh, find a way to output multiple textures from a single buffer. Uh, actually, output from, uh, multiple texture in buffer from a gel setup. Now it's correct. Okay, so really, really fast how to get a uh, code running uh, inside the touch designer from uh, Shader Toy. Right click, select all, copy. Nice. Then you have to drop a JLSL guy and replace the code. Okay. It's kind of almost all the time the same, at least for the normal things. So it's kind of useful, my opinion, to make a text with, in that you write this almost everything, almost every time we want to import something, okay. we save time. Okay, we can copy. Here, uh, I'm actually, these are the UV of what is happening in the texture. And I'm actually linking to the UV itself uh, of the GI code because we are actually using uh, WebGL here, and this is uh, OpenGL. So it's a bit different. Okay. Then uh, you merge this guy. So then you can change this, uh, and more or less you have to do less stuff in order to make it compatible. Mm -hmm. Replace the code, okay. So when you do this now, 100% you will have this I channel. I channel 0 is this guy. I channel 1 is this guy. I channel 2 is this guy. Okay. And you should actually use a, something like Sublime to find everything and replace it in the same time, okay, at the same time. But for now, I know that it's only one place, so... Whoop. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Here. This has to be written in the touch design way. Those are stuff that belongs to the GLSL top itself. And actually here we are asking for the input zero and you have to write it with this. No other way. Okay. You are still sad because uh, because you are missing this, of course. And then uh, yeah, and then last things you have to always do is to change the void. The void has to be a void main, that's it, and take no argument. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Okay. This is actually like this because I didn't assign the parameter here. So, okay, fast explanation. So, now we use this. Uh, I link the I resolution back to to my uh, to my resolution to 
so now it's taking the resolution from here and we have so yeah i mean if i change this then it becomes bigger supposedly yeah yeah nice okay now we have something really cool happening we can finally analyze the code and export take the code drop it here open i actually check how it looks so i think it's readable so we will continue like that last time i was not sure it was enough big but i guess it's readable uh, okay so now uh, let's read it I've not seen anybody out there computing correct uh, selling tiger distance for Voronoi uh, for Voronoi pattern yet uh, that's why they cannot shade the cell in tiger correctly and uh, why we are never seeing cell boundaries uh, rendered correctly however here this is how you do it mathematically correct distance uh, yeah always good to have something mathematically correct for rendering okay here is the fine uh, property we actually don't care uh, the hash are magical numbers uh, or uh, vector with useful things in, in, in it okay. uh, actually now we are using our input and we are using a texture load that is actually taking the input as values instead of texture if not will be written in only texture okay uh, this is actually the Voronoi code maybe we can see it bigger this is interesting i actually uh you know This is the Voronoi code, uh, it's declaring, uh, it's taking uh, as input a uh, vector x I guess it's a way to take an empty vector in the function uh, This vector is called n and is making the floor of x and the other one the fact of x First pass, regular Voronoi <laughs> Here we have another vector and I don't get this comma here sorry uh, then it's declaring a float and it's giving this value here we have two for loop that increase every time like the one in python so you go zero one two three four and they always close in these two for loop that are declared uh, it's actually taking another vector call it g and making something else so yeah, it's a bit complicated. The only things I really like is that it's super fast. And we can have uh, really good results. Okay. So now that we actually understand what is written, more or less, we can actually concentrate ourselves in the main void. The main void is actually centering the image speed and uh, taking the Voronoi function and multiply this for it it's a sort of scaling then we have uh, actually we can make scale smaller so this is too big this is too big uh, yeah okay Uh, so he's declaring this isoline, okay, uh, that are the orange things that move. Then, uh, ah no, actually they are the interior. Uh, then we have the border, that are the orange things you see. Then he's actually, uh, this is smart, okay. So in order to do draw point, he's not using the dot uh, function. 
uh, is using this move step. But uh, is actually uh, making the points the, the what is white and what is black uh, only the intersection of this length. That is actually uh, is taking two value from the uh, where is it here? Okay, from this Voronoi. So we have channel. Uh, 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 the distance is a, uh, this float did here is calculating the distance between uh, uh, the channel y and the channel z of the Voronoi. Okay. Uh, and then with this move step uh, is taking this value here and only the interception is drawing is drawing this point here. Okay. Nice. How are we gonna use all those magical data? We have to create buffer. Buffer are nothing special, are more, more output. You can be fancy making array. I don't care. So we go like this. Uh, let's analyze. As we said, we have some pieces here. And uh, we want to output a texture for each piece. And then maybe find a workaround. Or maybe even add uh, data. Uh, so, really easy, we can uh, output, I don't know, uh, say ISO output, ISO output, okay, we always have to be sure that we also add the, the, uh, the right amount of buffer in the DLC top, so, if not, you won't get the text in text designer. And now we can use this new output. This new output, actually, we have to make some little changes here. Uh, so, yeah, now we will have error for a bit, but no worries. So, we go back ISO, and everybody said, and we declare, for example, this is like three. Of course, not because we got the border. Uh, let's actually see how we did it there. So it's definitely faster. You can copy. Okay. Uh, you have to rearrange the values. Okay. And declare a lot of vector. See three that will be now put as back four with the alpha with one. Okay. In order to make the shaded uh, things that he was speaking about, uh, you have to output uh, a lot of data. You have to output different kind of data that are not properly given from the shader itself. So uh, let's see here. Okay. So I will stay a bit here so you can pause and copy the code. Uh, here are the ISO line, okay, and they are being outputted here. Uh, I'm actually compiling a new VEC3, okay, with this DD. This DD here, as I said before, is actually the point position. Of the center of the cell. So from there you can shade. Okay. I output it as buffer to select a buffer when you do the things I show you of the with the code you can just uh, use a render select top. Uh, in the void we do not have to forget that we have a vector called C, that is our Voronoi. So here we have all the data of the Voronoi things. You can output also uh, any buffer you want. And those are the points of the Voronoi. Okay. Ok, 
Okay, so let's explain in particular this text. Let's see matrix rendered, but it's not. Okay, this is the coolest uh, part, okay, so if you actually output, as I said, the, the point and then from here, from there you shade, okay, you put actually this texture. In the middle it's zero and then uh, much more is the distance from a cell to another, the uh, more white you have, okay. So if you actually make the opposite with the, with the level, you make invert, and you have this. Okay. And then you can do, yeah, I don't know, up to you. Uh, okay. So resuming, go here, take this code, uh, find uh, another tutorial that explains you how to import a code from Shader Toy, if you didn't get it here. Then uh, add multiple output to your buffer, to your code, okay, let's go back here. add multiple buffer to your code and output all the data you need. Uh, to have a shaded uh, kind of uh, metables, you need to actually use this float here, convert it to a vector that has all the same amount, the, the, it's a vector and all the value of this vector are all the same, so it's white. Kind of. Uh, and then uh, output it as buffer. This is where you get the shaded things. Uh, hope you like this tutorial. Leave a comment and we we'll see each other next time.